Welcome to Polynomial Functions of Higher Degree. We're going to start graphing things and uh, learn something about a new thing called limits. And it is going to be fabulous. So right here, this is just a little bit of a review that I would love you to go through. We're not going to use Desmos on here. We're just going to graph things by hand because you need to kind of understand the background so you could look at a graph and say, yeah, that seems to be right, or I think I did something wrong. So we're just going to start in here by looking at uh, this, this equation that I have right here. Now, if you think back, you might notice that uh, there's a squared in there, so you know that the mother function is going to be a parabola, and you should know what the vertex is because you can look right here and figure it out. So I look in there and I say, okay, my vertex is going to be, what happens with the three? Got it, three, four. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to count three, four, one, two, three, four. There it is. So I'm doing this um, by hand on the screen of my computer. Sometimes it'll be a little bit ugly, but, but work with me now that I have the best intentions of actually getting it to the exact right spot. So three, four is my vertex. Then I think, okay, is it going up or is it opening down? And the way I know that is by looking right here. Oh, it is opening down. And I know that it's got a vertical stretch of two. So it flips down, it flips down, vertical stretch of two. So over one, down two. There we go, over one, down two. Now, generally, if I was going to work through this, um, if it was just like the mother function, I know that it goes over one, down one, and then the next one, like, 2 squared is, is 4, so I'm going to go down, instead of going down 3, I'm going to go down one, two, right there. Figure out, does that make sense to you? Is that legal? How did I do that? Then I'm going to oh, draw this amazingly well, and so it's not exactly right, but hear what I'm meaning, it's way easier with a pencil. Now it says this, what is the y-intercept for the graph? Well, I'm hoping that you can kind of get the basic gist of the graph. Then what is the y-intercept? So I'm going to take you back, way back in your memory, and I'm going to say to find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So I'm going to take this original equation and just plug 0 into it. So if I have negative 2 times 0 minus 3, all squared plus four. Um, so zero minus three is negative three. Negative three squared is positive nine times negative two. So negative 18 plus four. So my y-intercept is at uh, zero, negative 14. And I can just say my y-intercept's at 14, negative 14. Does that make sense according, well, because I drew my graph a little bit crooked? No, it doesn't make sense. But according to the, the real deal, if I drew it better, would that make sense? Yes, hopefully it would. All right, so this one, ugh, how are you going to graph this one? Well, what do you know about the mother function? The mother function is x to the third. And hopefully you remember that x to the third kind of goes something like that. I mean, that's not perfect, but it's going to go like that. Now, some other things you know, what would be helpful to know? Well, you know that because it's x to the third, how many zeros or roots or how many times is it going to cross the x-axis? Yeah, there's going to be three of them. Now, there has to be three. They may or may not be real. If they're not real, you might have imaginary um, roots, and those always, always, always come in pairs. So, um, but you're going to at least, because it starts low and it's high, going to at least have one time that it crosses the x axis, and generally three. So there will always be three roots, and then... Um, Hopefully they're all real. Sometimes there's pairs of imaginaries. So could you right there figure out what the roots are right away? And I think, yes, you could. So look at x to the third minus 1. Uh, can you pull anything out of that? Yeah, I could pull an x out, and then I'd have x squared minus 1. Now hopefully you look at x squared minus 1, and you're like, hey, I know that that's x plus 1, x minus 1. And I would say, yes because you learned that a long time ago in 8th or ninth grade. 
Okay, so if that's the case, you now have three zeros. You have a zero at negative one, a zero at positive one, and then what's this one? Zero. Right, okay, so I'm just going to put zero, negative one, positive one. Ooh, that's kind of ugly. But it is what it is. I'm just going to squeeze stuff in there. Now, what do you know about the mother function? You know that it starts low. This is going to start down here. It's going to come up. But then what has to happen? Has to go down. And then what has to happen? Goes back up. So is that perfect? No. But is my, like, what's happening at the ends right? Yes. Are my zeros good? Yes. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. And that's going to be the basic gist of what we're working on. So uh, go to the next slide. Draw graphs of four cubic functions, two with positive leading coefficients, two with negative. Well, what do you know if it's positive? You know, it starts low, ends high. So there's one, and I don't know, you draw another one. Not quite as pretty. Uh, what if it's got a negative leading coefficient? Yeah, then it just starts high, ends low. So these are things you know. Maybe you remember them, maybe you don't, but that should have been a quick brain jog. Okay, go to the next one. Do it without me. Four quartic functions. Quick, like, do it, pause. Quartic looks like what letter? It's like this. It's a W. So in general, if I put, there's my x-axis, how many zeros does it have to have? It has to have four. Um... You, some of them might be imaginary, and that would be fine, but there are always four zeros. In that case, there's four real ones, but if I kept that as my x-axis and went like this, that's still quartic. It has two real zeros and two imaginaries. Then just what happens to that if, um, if they're negative? Well, it just opens down, so now it's an M, or like a crazy-looking M. Either way, it's going to have four zeros. Four of them might be real. Some of them might be imaginary, but there are going to be four zeros. So what is the basic gist of everything that you need to know for this? Polynomial of degree n has at most n real zeros, so it has to have n zeros right now. I will say at most n real zeros. And then n minus 1 extrema. What in the world does that mean? Okay, well, let's look. I'm going to go back to the slide before. Do you see these? These are 4. And extrema just means what are, like, the the maxes and mins. So do you see how that is a 4th to the 4th degree? So therefore, you've got 1, 2, 3, extrema. 1, 2, 3, extrema. Um, so that's going to end up, you know, if you have 4, you're going to have... Three extrema, these, see this is a third, so you've got one, two extrema. So I can look through and it says a polynomial it has at most. So uh, the at most n minus one extrema is kind of important because sometimes you might have a bounce or a scoot, which we'll get to later, and that will be all sorts of fun. There we go. So I'm going to stop for now and have a great day.